Hello, and welcome back to the Big Apple. Today, I'm taking Metro North's New Haven line to Danbury. Now, before I get into any other specifics about our route today, let's first check out this beautiful rail terminal. Now, Grand Central Terminal dates way back, being built between 1903 and 1913. It sports a mighty 67 tracks, and in its fiscal year of 2018, it saw an annual passenger count of a whopping 67 million. Grand Central Terminal offers two ways to get your tickets for your train. You can either do it the old-fashioned way at a ticket counter, or you can head over to the many, many kiosks located throughout the station and buy it there. Speaking of tickets, I just got mine, so let's head over to the platforms right now. My train today is departing on track 19. However, thanks to Metro North's weird way of operating their commuter trains, I actually have to take two trains in order to get to Danbury. The first train of this trip is departing from Grand Central, which is the train I'll be taking right this second, and will take me as far as South Norwalk. From there, I'll have to make a transfer to a diesel train, which will take me the length of the entire Danbury branch, all the way up to Danbury. Honestly, I find this way of operating your trains a bit unconventional and might not really be the most convenient way. Luckily, the Metro North Railroad is looking into and has already partially started electrifying the Danbury branch, so hopefully this issue will be solved in the future. So, what trains do we have here? Well, these are the M8 EMUs built by Kawasaki. They started service on Metro North in 2011 and just recently also on CT Rail's Shoreline East trains. These trains have a top speed of 100 miles per hour, but are only limited to 80 on Metro North. So here we are on board the M8. As you can see, these seats are laid out in a 2 plus 3 configuration, consisting mostly of airline style seats. But don't worry, there are still bays of 6 and 4. Alright, so made it on board. Uh, this should be quick. This is an express train. The next stop is Stanford. So Danbury, here we come. While we're at it, I think we should look around the seats. So there's this. I'm assuming this is a armrest because there is none. You can put stuff on this too. We've got power outlets. This is really nice. Never really see these on American commuter trains that much. Decent leg room. <laughs> overhead racks and uh, comfy seats. Thank 
Sanford Station, changing for service to Lucanan. Lucanan should be up and over track 5. Listen at the station for possible changes. This is Sanford. Before this trip ends, let's explore this train a little bit. Now, first things first, let's check out the restrooms. I'm happy to report that these were in clean and working order. The only thing that I didn't really like that much was the hostile looking toilet. So made it to South Norwalk. Gotta catch my connection to Danbury. Let's go. So a little info about the trains on the second leg of the trip. The coaches are a mix of Condot and Metro North Shoreliner coaches, while motive power today is being provided by a Brookville BL20GH. These were built in 2008 and since 2017 are being rebuilt. Seating on these coaches are the same in a 2 plus 3 configuration. Alright, so on board train number 2, let's review the seat. The seats are older, much more worn out and uh, tired. They're still decently comfortable. Ooh, more firm, I should say. Um, there's no power outlet on this one. But there is still a luggage rack. After South Norwalk, the scenery gets a whole lot more rural. It shifts from going through New York suburbs to cute towns along the Long Island Sound to going through forests and small villages. However, in my opinion, this scenery isn't exactly the best. However, it doesn't help that I took this trip on a very overcast day. Nevertheless, it's quite breathtaking seeing how this train stops at the tiniest of villages and people still get on and off. So let's take a quick look at what this train has to offer. First things first are the bathrooms. Now, unlike the M8s, these bathrooms were in the total opposite shape. A couple of red flags are the numerous pieces of toilet paper above the toilet, as well as the faucet not working. At least the lock, soap, and dryer work, but this isn't the best condition to have a bathroom in. Now, I didn't really check the bathrooms on the other cars of this consist, but I'm hoping that at least the faucet worked on those. Speaking of the other cars, it seems like the seats on them have gotten a facelift. Unlike the seats in the car that I was sitting in, which still look like they're stuck in the 1950s.
So, as this trip comes to a close, what did I think? Well, this trip was great, but there are two things that could be improved. Number one, the Danbury branch could be fully electrified and have an increase in service, like full direct service to New York as well as possible rush hour express trains. This, in my opinion, would decrease travel times. Another thing is much more modern rolling stock on the Danbury branch. This was really apparent when I stepped off the EMU and onto the diesel train. If the diesel trains were refurbished or even upgraded to M8s with electrification fully completed on the Danbury branch, I think this would make the user experience a whole lot better. But lastly, how much did this trip cost? Well, this trip costed $13.25, which I'm not going to lie, is pretty cheap for a two-hour ride on a commuter train in the USA. Not to mention, this ticket was valid not for one, but two trains. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it a bit informative as well as entertaining. If you did, I hope you consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. This is the 4905 here, and I will see you next time. Take care.